Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is air. A-I-R. Really? You bet your life! The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! That's me, Groucho Marx. Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples tonight. Fenneman, who's placed the try for it? Well, a bachelor and a spinster, Groucho, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. Land sakes. Uh, their names are Ida Easley and Jack Wayne, and here they come now. Come on in here, folks, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> and if Thank you say you. the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Ida Easley, eh? Huh? Ida Easley. Oh, that's an easily name to remember. I mean, <laughs> you're the spinster, eh? I am. Mm -hmm. Let me see your spin. <laughs> Where are you from, Ida? I'm from Taylorville, Illinois. Where? Taylorville, Illinois. Taylorville? Did you have a, a job, Ida? I'm a matron with the Douglas Aircraft Company. <laughs> 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 Oh, thank you. Ida, of course you realize that half of that swag belongs to Mr. Yeah, Wayne that's over what here. Huh? Me. I <laughs> think he's more worried than I am, for well. I have a hold of it. <laughs> well, eventually he may be holding you and the fifty dollars, eh? Well, Jack, uh, I will tell. Well, what do you what do you do, Jack? Oh, I run a streetcar. Uh, where are you from, uh, Jack? In heart, born in the heart of Boston. Why did you leave the uh, Bean Town? Oh, my feet got itchy. Now I want to roam. You went to Rome, and how'd you like it there? <laughs> Where do you run your trolley? On a track. <laughs> Caught me napping, eh? <laughs> I suppose that's one of the little jokes you streetcar men use to amuse each other back in the car barn, is that it? That's an old joke. There's that. Well, it may, it may interest you to know that while you're knocking each other out back in the car barn, the city's pulling up the tracks to make way for a bus line. <laughs> Jack, how come you're a bachelor? Is it because in your job you see too much of women? Oh, I see plenty of them. You do, huh? You could see a lot more of them if you'd step off your streetcar and watch them climb on. <laughs> I always get on last. I don't... <laughs> they think it's politeness, but it isn't really. Right? <laughs> Jack, if you found the right woman, would you be interested in matrimony? Oh, I guess I would. If what I... would you consider the right woman? Or a housekeeper, a good housekeeper, a good cook. I don't go to a ball game with me once in a while. You don't need one girl. What you need is the YWCA, Jack. <laughs> How old are you, Ida, if that isn't too... Uh, oh, I think I'm point. about his age. <laughs> Frankly, you don't care how old he is, do you? Huh? I such a thing. You're his age anyway, no matter how old he is. No matter how old he is. Are you a good cook, Ida? Well, I think I'm good. Do you like baseball? Oh, very much. Do you follow it uh, quite closely? Yes, I keep up the game. I see. Well, I'm an average fan, too. What do you think of Sugar Ray Robinson's chances this year? Huh? Oh. You think he's going to break Babe Ruth's record? Oh, I think he stands a very good chance. <laughs> Yes, but on the other hand, don't forget, he still has to beat Gussie Moran. I know, I understand. Well, you can't blame a girl for trying, I always say. As a matter of fact, I never said that before in my life. I don't know why I lie this way. Would you, would you get married tonight if the right man came along and uh, knocked you off your feet? Oh, I think I would. You would? Huh? Well, look out for Ding Dong Daddy, are you? <laughs> he can knock you off your feet and charge you 11 cents car fare at the same time. <laughs> Well, you certainly make a nice couple. Just remember, none but the brave deserve the fair, Jack. Always remember that, eh? And you're just the one to collect it. Now, we're going to play You Bet Your Life for $2,000. But I want you to pay close attention to Fenneman over there.
Friends, when you select a dealer to service your car, you owe it to yourself to visit a member of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer Organization. This nationwide group, there are over 3,000 of them from coast to coast, believes in the old-fashioned idea of courtesy and the modern idea of finest equipment, best trained men. As for the cars they handle, well, there just aren't any better than the big and brilliant DeSoto and the beautiful Plymouth. DeSoto is the car with smooth, sweeping lines that attract so much attention. You'll enjoy the experience of greater safety with DeSoto's powerful brakes that bring you to a smooth stop. No car in America has bigger brakes. DeSoto starts so quickly and powerfully and lets you drive without shifting. So drive a DeSoto before you decide on any car. And remember... All dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Look for those two great names linked together. DeSoto, Plymouth. All right, now let's see if you two will get a chance at the $2,000. Fenneman, explain the rules. All right. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. You see, our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. All right, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected birds, animals, and people as your category. All right, here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? $10. $10. What animal do you associate with Jonah? The whale. The whale is right. Now, talk right up. <laughs> and you folks are on your way. You have $30. All right, you got $30. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? Uh, 20. 20? What animal do you associate with the Pied Piper? Oh, uh... Oh. Take a look at Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they followed her up the street. They... The Piper. Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's rats. You, you, yeah. you were on the right track. How much have they got now? They uh, now have $10, well, Groucho. That, that's a shame. You're down mm, to $10. That's a shame. We're down right. to $10. Here's your third question. How much of the 10 will you try? $5. $5. Is that all right, Jack? Yes, sir. What animal do you associate with Daniel in the Bible? Um, lion. Lion. The lion is right. Well, they're trying again. You now have $15. <laughs> all right, you got $15, and here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 15 will you risk? Well, let's take ten. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. What animal do you associate with Lady Godiva? Oh, the uh, horse. That's right, a horse is correct. <laughs> and we wind up with a grand total of twenty-five dollars. Don't forget, you won how much? Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five dollars, and you won a hundred dollars. That's a hundred and twenty-five dollars. Thanks, and good luck from the Desoto Primitive. <laughs> Well, Groucho, our, our next couple has been in a waiting room off stage, so, of course, they don't know the secret word is air. True, true. Okay, fellas, you can bring them in now. We invited some lady barbers to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Maybelle Taylor. Her partner is a married man, Mr. Thomas DeSilver. And here they are, folks. I'd like you to meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life, and if you say the secret word, you'll split $100 between you. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Maybelle Taylor, is that right? That's right. And, uh, Thomas De Silva. You're a lady barber, Maybelle? That's right. Where, where are you from, Mabel? Montana. Montana? Where about? Culbertson, Montana. And, uh, Thomas De Silva, you're, you're a married man, huh? That's right. Is that your only claim to distinction, Thomas? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Tommy? Retired police captain. Oh. How long? I'm glad I found that out. How long have you been married? Sixteen years. You remember how you met your wife, huh? Yes, but it's a long story. Well, keep it down to 1,500 words, will you? <laughs> I have to be in Pittsburgh a week from next Wednesday. <laughs> okay, go ahead. How'd you meet your wife? We went down to Wildwood, New Jersey. Got a couple of bathing suits and took her down to Wildwood, New Jersey. Put a bathing suit on and then they gave her the engagement ring. <laughs> You're a pretty shrewd cookie, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. So I have seen her in the bathing suit, then I started a singing proposal to her. You sang a proposal? Oh, yeah. Well, how mm -hmm. did you sing the proposal to her? Let me call you sweetheart and gave her the engagement ring. Would you mind singing a few words? Uh... Sing it. Oh. Well, go ahead. <laughs> Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. <laughs> Let me hear you whisper that you love, love me. me too. <laughs> Keep alive, my son. In your eyes, oh, I'll true. If we had Let some more fellas, 
they got the worst broadcast in this town. <laughs> I'm in love with you. And she consented to marry you after that? <laughs> That's the first time years. I ever sang a chorus in five keys. <laughs> now, Mabel, are you married? No, I'm not. You're not married, huh? Would you get married to a man who sang like that to you? Oh, well, certainly. I never met a lady barber before. Aren't they pretty rare? Well, I'd say there's uh, possibly 15 of us in the city of Los Angeles. No, that's medium rare. Now, what made you decide? <laughs> what made you decide to become a barber? Or a tonsorial artist, is that the I uh, wanted to make money enough to see myself through nurses' training. And? I'm still barbering. <laughs> What's the difference between a lady barber and a man barber? Uh, there are several. There are several differences? There are several differences. <laughs> well, I'm relieved to hear that. Huh? <laughs> you better clarify it, Mabel. There's a hymn in Idaho who may have forgotten. <laughs> well... We have a lighter touch, and uh, we don't talk an ear off of you. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Just shave it off, huh? <laughs> I suppose you have a scrapbook where you keep all your clippings, Mabel? Huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> do any of your customers flirt with you, Mabel? The male customers? Uh, well, they're not really serious with me. Now, how do you handle these Romeos? Oh, I just kid them along. They like it. Well, how do you kid them? Do you tell them jokes? Yes, occasionally. Well, tell us a joke. Go ahead. Pretend, <laughs> pretend I'm sitting in your chair and you want me to forget how much all this is going to cost me. Now you go ahead and tell me a joke. Do you know the best way to save your hair? Yes, put it in a cigar box. That's an old joke. Then. <laughs> do you know a way tell to... Tell me another joke, huh? Do you know a way to avoid falling hair? Yes, just step nimbly to one side, huh? <laughs> even older than the other joke. Eh? <laughs> you know any more jokes, uh, Mabel? No, I believe not. <laughs> Go on, admit it. I'm too fast for you, eh, Mabel. Eh? Well, well grass, your uh, hair is getting a little bit thin. Yeah, well, uh, grass doesn't grow on a busy street, eh, Mabel. <laughs> well, I was going to say that grass doesn't grow on a cement highway either. <laughs> Mabel, I know just how your customers feel. <laughs> My head is bloody but unbowed. <laughs> well, all right, now we're going to play You Bet Your Life, eh? Now, uh, we'll see how you two uh, make out in the battle for the $2,000. You got to work together as a team and run your $20 into more than our other couples. I can't tell you how much the other couples won, but Phantom is going to remind our listeners. The Bachelor and the Spinster won $25. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected nicknames of famous cities as your category. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Tommy, wake yeah. up. Ten dollars. You're going to ignore Mabel, huh? <laughs> what city is known as the city of brotherly love? Philadelphia. 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 That's where you... <laughs> They're on their way, Groucho. They have thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for two thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty will you try? No, Talk right up. Ten. Make that? it twenty. All right. What city is known as the biggest little city in the world? Reno, Nevada. Reno, Nevada is right. <laughs> All your folks are really fine now. You have $50. Here's your okay. third question. Now, how much will you bet? 50. 50. What city is known as the Mile High City? Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. <laughs> and they've climbed the $100. You've climbed as high as Denver, Colorado. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 100 will you try? Make it all. The last question. You're yes, here's the last question. Let You're it go. Lost. Let it go. You're going to shoot the works, shoot huh? The works. What city yeah. is known as the Smoky City? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh is right. <laughs> and they're right up in a grand total of $200. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Thank you very much. Now, now we're going to soon know who gets the chance at the big question. Worth $2,000 tonight. Because at this point... The people who were just up here, the lady barber and the married man, are leading with $200. And the secret word is still air. Uh -huh. Okay, fellas, you can bring in our next contestants. We invited to the show tonight some professional golfers and some singing teachers. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Lucia Liverette and Mr. 
Paul Runyon. And here they come. Folks, I'd like you to meet Joshua Martin. Welcome to You Bet Your Life, folks. And if you say the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Lucia Liberette, huh? You're a singing teacher. Sounds like a pretty good record, uh, Lucia. Where are you from? Sing Sing? <laughs> I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, huh? Yes, you sir. sing the St. Louis blues? <laughs> well, no, not quite. Paul Runyon, it's nice to see you again. I'm sure everyone is familiar with your name. What did you say your name was? <laughs> Paul Runyon. Paul Runyon, huh? See there, even you're familiar with it, huh? <laughs> well, let's see. You won the Davis Cup, the Whiteman Cup, and the men's singles at Forest Hills, didn't you? Uh... <laughs> you may have a good memory, but those are tennis terms. Oh, the wrong racket. What are some of your titles, then? <laughs> What are some of your titles, Paul? I was fortunate enough to win the uh, National Professional Golfers Championship PGA. in 1934 and 1938. That's pretty good for a little fellow like that, huh? <laughs> All famous golfers have nicknames, there, Paul. What's yours? Little Poison. Little Poison, huh? They call me Big Schlemiel, huh? <laughs> why, why do they call you Little Poison, uh, Paul? Well, perhaps it's because I have been the thorn in the side of some heavier adversaries. Very well put, Paul. <laughs> and uh, Lucia, you, uh, what kind of singing do you teach? Opera and classical and semi-classic. You mean they have to study to scream like that? Huh? <laughs> Tell me, Rigoletto, can you teach anyone to sing? I will say yes because I've never found anyone yet who could not learn if he had the correct technical work. You should have been out here about ten minutes ago. Huh? <laughs> You'd be licking your wounds now, Lucia. <laughs> All right, how would you teach me, Lucia? Boom, da boom, 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 boom. That's Lucia, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Well, to begin with, uh, correct breathing. Boom, 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 boom. Yes, uh, inhaling, inhaling. Uh, deeply. Relaxation so the air will keep coming. Up. There you are. You pick that out, Lucia, and be sure Paul gets 50 of it, huh? <laughs> well, Cadenza, are all singers alike, or is there a difference between them? Oh, certainly. What kind of voices do singers have? Well, of course, to begin with, our first classification is there are women's voices and men's voices. Well, uh, oh, oh, I didn't know that. I must tell this to this uh, hymen. <laughs> Suppose I wanted to get up a lady quartet. Could I find one who sings bass? No. The contralto is as low as a lady goes. You haven't been out of <laughs> Lucia, obviously, we haven't been out with the same kind of ladies. <laughs> now, Paul, let's talk about golf. How long do you have to be a pro before you can become an amateur? Oh, no, my mistake. That's tennis. I was thinking of... What is your favorite club? The Annandale Golf Club of Pasadena. What's your best score for 18 holes? On a regulation 18-hole championship course, 61, at the Forest Hills Field Club in Bloomfield, New Jersey. How about, uh, what does the average golfer go around in? I think 95 to 100. How about the girls? Don't some of the girls do better than that? Oh, a good many of the girls go around in a great deal less. <laughs> What time does your club open up in the morning? <laughs> I remember the first time I played golf, I went around in 75. I didn't play at all in 76. I was busy at Valley Four. <laughs> How can I improve my score? I shoot around 94. That's with cheating. I think I'd advise you to take a few lessons from a confident instructor, do I've a taken, little practicing I've and a little lessons. playing. I've taken lessons. It's hopeless. <laughs> well, how could I learn to win without playing well? <laughs> you might, uh, you might resort to a little pencil pushing, or you might have a hole in your pocket, or you might have a handy toe in the rough, or you might use a hand mashie more frequently. 
How is it you know so much about those things? Huh? <laughs> Tell me about that pencil pushing again, huh? First of all, you have to forget to count over five. On any hole? Any hole. What about the uh, 540 at Hillcrest? Well, I think you could still forget to count over five on that. I do, but you know where I am? I'm in the face sand trap leading the tea. <laughs> I met 11 Arabs the last time I played. <laughs> you must have had a number of exciting moments as a professional golfer. Can you tell us about one of them, Paul? Well, as a tournament player, I've had many exciting experiences. Perhaps the most exciting is during the playing of the international four-ball matches in Miami, Florida, I was partnered by Horton Smith in this best ball event. And on arriving at the fourth tee, I dropped a high five iron shot right on the top of a head of a gentleman sitting on a camp stool behind the green. He had just reached up to take his hat off to polish his head with his handkerchief when the ball lit on the top of his head and he dropped off of the seat like he'd been shot with a Winchester rifle. <laughs> but on the next year, Horton and I incidentally won the first international four ball championship and we were paired again as partners. The next year, arriving at the ninth green with two or three thousand people down the left side of the fairway, hit, Smith hit a booming hook down the left side. Down goes a man. Who is it? Our friend of the camp. <laughs> and the, the publicity on the international four ball matches the next year says that Dr. Johnson is in Miami to watch his perennial favorites, Runyon and Smith, in the international four ball matches, but he'll gallery in an armored suit. <laughs> Well, it must be very handy to have a walking bullseye on the golf course. Eh? <laughs> now, Lucia, let's get back to singing again. Do you have any particular exercises you give your singing pupils? Well, yes, there are several kinds of exercises, all to uh, teach them freedom of breathing, and as I said, the free flow of air up into the resonance chambers, and then to make them relax and be happy about what they're doing, we give them a laughing exercise. They... Um, start in, they enjoy it, they laugh all the way from middle C up to high C. I once laughed from Glendale at Burbank. But... <laughs> <laughs> what about demonstrating this exercise, Lucia? Eh? We might take something a little lower, maybe. We'll take than, something uh, a little lower. Me, for example. Huh? <laughs> you can't get any lower than that. Let's go, huh? I see. Say hello, Lucia. Huh? All right. The deep breath in the diaphragm, then drop the jaw open for the air to go up, and then... Uh -huh. <laughs> well, the three of us could be very happy, Paul. We could all sing together. Mashies in the cold, cold ground. <laughs> well, now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat the other two couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,000 question. That's the Soda Plymouth question. Now, I can't tell you how much the other couples won. But Phantom is offstage to remind our listeners. The Lady Barber and the Married Man are ahead with $200. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected women athletes as your category. Now, here's your first question. How much will you bet? $10. $10. $10. In what sport is Gussie Moran famous? Tennis. Tennis is right. Huh? <laughs> and on the way, they have $30. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of your $30 will you bet on your second question? Twenty? Twenty dollars. In what sport is Florence Chadwick famous? It's a tough one. Take a Tennis? Stand. No, I'm sorry. It's swimming. She broke Gertrude Edley's record for the channel. They now have ten dollars. They now have ten dollars, he said in a low funereal voice, <laughs> huh? Here's your third question. <laughs> How much of the ten are you going to go for? Nine. No. Nine. Well, you're going to hang on the edge, huh, Paul? In what sport is Patty Berg famous? Golf. Golf is right, huh? <laughs> well, we're on the way again. They now have $19. All right, you got here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 19? The works. You want to shoot the works? All right. And what sport is Barbara Ann Scott famous? Ice skating. Ice skating is correct. <laughs> and they wind up with a grand total of $38. And that means the lady barber and the married man with $200 get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. <laughs> The 
best trained men, the best materials, and the best equipment. Those are the important things every DeSoto Plymouth dealer offers you car owners. And that's why you should take your car for service to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. You see, DeSoto Plymouth dealers have men trained in the latest factory methods. This means that the mechanics who work on your car are experts. And in every DeSoto Plymouth dealer shop, you'll find special tools and costly equipment. In addition, right on hand, they have a large supply of factory engineered and inspected Mopar parts. Yes, you'll like the way business is done at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's. Find this out for yourself and do it real soon. The very next time your car needs service, drive in where you see the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> And here's the Lady Barbara and the Married Man, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Good luck to you. Here we go. Uh, for $2,000, I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. So think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. The longest battle of our Civil War was the Seven Days Battle. What city was the objective of this great struggle? Richmond is right. <laughs> That's right. You win two thousand dollars. You had the right answer, so you win two thousand dollars. What are you gonna What are you gonna do with all that money? Help her brother-in-law. You're gonna help your brother-in-law. Why? Ill. Ill. Oh, he's ill. Well, that's a fine way to spend it. And you, Mabel? I'm going to give some to the cancer fund. Some to the cancer fund. Well, those are worthy objectives, huh? <laughs> Let's see. You won $2,000 plus uh, $100 in the... How much did they 200, win in the quiz? 200 in the quiz. 200 in the quiz and $2,000 cash. And the secret word? I don't think this couple said... Well, well, you won $2,200, $2,200. Congratulations and thanks to both of you from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks. Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Walkers wise, use their eyes. You Bet Your Life is transcribed from Hollywood, produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman, signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.